the FM23 beta is here, and what on earth is going on with my virtual scarf? Anyway, it's time for the first episode of our World Cup bottom up challenge. But before we get into that, welcome to the channel if you're new, and welcome back if you're not. I'm Dodgy Gamer, and I need a shave. So through the FM23 beta period and into November, I'm going to be bringing you plenty of FM World Cup content. So if that's your kind of thing, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. So what is the bottom up challenge, and why are we starting with Ghana? Well, according to the latest FIFA World Rankings, the lowest ranked of the 32 nations qualified for this year's World Cup is Ghana. Yep, that surprised me as well, but there they are, all the way down in 61st place. So the challenge is as follows. I start with the lowest ranked nation, and I play through the World Cup. And if my team is eliminated at any stage, I have to start over with the next lowest ranked team. And that continues until we finally win the World Cup. Hopefully that will happen before we get through all 32 nations. So here I am, magic disappearing scarf and all, appointed as the new manager of Ghana. Looking at the squad I've selected amongst our key players will be Inaki Williams, of course, whose pace we will be looking to exploit on the flanks. Also on the flanks, we have Crystal Palace star and son of Adibi Pele, Jordan Ayew, who will bring his experience to the team. And we'll also have his brother Andre playing up front. We have this guy from Arsenal to keep the party going in midfield. Tarek Lamptey is also likely to feature as a wing-back as is Daniel Amati. The centre of defence is a bit of a worry though, with Salisu likely the best option but lacking experience at this level. Tactically, as I get to grips with the new game, I've returned to one of my go-to formations of 4-2-3-1, with a positive and a more conservative balanced version. We had a couple of AFCON qualifiers to take care of in September, both comfortable wins, before a warm-up friendly with the Netherlands in which we showed impressive organisation to get a nil-nil draw. For the tournament itself, we are of course in Group H, and to progress into the knockout rounds we have to target a win over South Korea and then hope to snatch a result from one of either Portugal or Uruguay. Now, I won't do live comms of every single game, just the ones that I feel are going to be the most crucial in our progression. So we'll start with highlights from the opening game with South Korea. It did not get off to a great start as Young Ho headed home on 10 minutes. We soon hit our stride, however, with Amate showing some great skill on the flank before playing in Kudus, who put home the equaliser. Williams had a great chance on the half-hour mark, but saw his shot saved by the keeper. And he also went close early in the second half with a fierce shot that just fizzed wide. The game then went frustratingly quiet until a late corner for South Korea, with Chang Hoon going far too close for my liking. So in the end, 1-1 was the result, but this was definitely an opportunity missed. Portugal were up next, and we did ourselves no favours, as Amate went in studs up on Yao Felix inside the first 10 minutes, and got himself a red card. To make the situation worse, Portugal were able to open the scoring from the resulting free kick. The ball eventually making it out wide to Cancelo. Ronaldo's header was saved, but Yao Felix was on hand to tap in the rebound. If you think the floodgates might have opened at this point, well... No, not yet. Just look at how we move the ball around here. A series of crisp passes until Partey floats a ball to Andre Ayew, who showed great control before slipping it past Costa. Unfortunately, that was not to be the beginning of a plucky underdog World Cup story as Diogo Jota fired Portugal back into the lead on the half hour and Ronaldo headed home in first half stoppage time. We went close in the second half as another lovely series of passes led to Williams breaking through down the flank, only to stop running at the crucial moment as the ball was cleared from the line. Ayu also went close moments later, but that was to be as close as we would come, as Ronaldo soon set up Fernandes to put the game beyond doubt. Not the best result then, as we found ourselves bottom of Group H, but not out yet. A couple of big ifs here, but if we could beat Uruguay, and if South Korea lost or drew, we would go through. Can we do it? Well, let's find out. So this is how we're going to line up. Obviously without Amate, who's suspended for this game, but we're sticking with the 4-2-3-1. We're going for the more positive attacking version. There's some big names in this Uruguay team, as you can see, but a lot of them towards the twilight era of their careers, like Suarez and Sebastian Coates, Muslera, 
hopefully we can take advantage. Okay then, so here come the teams, Ghana, Uruguay, of course. We all remember what happened at the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. So we're doing this for Ghana. We're doing this to get some revenge. Right, come on, let's get a Ghana foot on this ball and, and turn this around. But no, nope, Uruguay coming at us here. It looks like they're going to craft a chance. It's come out on the wing to him, and as he's played in, Facundo Torres, Valverde gets it to the far post, and it's cleared off the line by Salis. <laughs> that was nearly a disastrous start for us. All right, it's been pretty quiet since that early chance, but here we come. Come on, let's see if Ghana can create something here. We haven't done anything yet in this match, and it looks like we're still not going to. Suarez played through now. He knocks it out to Valverde on the wing. Valverde's got too far in, and Facundo Torres opens the scoring. Ah, uh, this is not going well for us. All right, free kick in a dangerous position. Duncan standing over the ball. Come on, curl one in. Ooh, good effort, good effort. Good hands from Maslera. Got Duncan again. Knocks it out to Jordan. Ayu, nice stuff. Oh, Ayu turns his man. Lovely stuff there. Get the cross in. He's going to do it to his brother. Ooh, it's going to VAR. Is it going to go to VAR? Penalty there. I think there was a push. Let's have a look. Come on. Come on, VAR, do us a favour. Yes, we've got the penalty awarded. Andre Ayew steps up. Come on, let's make this 1-1 before half-time. He's taken a nice long run-up, and he scored. Get in. Nice one. All right, 1-1 one, one it is at half-time. Slow start from us, but we came into it later in that half, so let's keep that momentum going. Oh, we've got a highlight straight from the kickoff here in the second half. I wasn't ready for that, but okay, come on. Let's keep that momentum going, like we said. Let's get something right off the bat here. It comes out to Williams. That was a great ball to find Williams. Can Williams get the cross into the far post? But, oh, nothing off from it yet. Oh, come on. Come on. We've still got the chance here. Ayu gets in, and Williams, oh, with a great chance. Brilliant save from Muslera. Corner now. Come on. Can we do something from the corner? Duncan again, he's popped up a lot today for us, but no, Uruguay deal with it very easily. Whew, hopefully we don't come to rue that chance by the end of the night. Right, time to make a couple of substitutions, I think. Thomas Partey, he is running on empty, so we're going to have to bring him off. We're going to bring on Ashimeru in his place. And we've also got Yayadon, not first choice, but our first choice left back, Baba Rahman, has been injured. So we're going to put him into the fray now. You can see he's still carrying that knock, but I think it's worth the risk. Right, Lamptey with the throw in. We haven't seen Uruguay mount an attack yet in the second half. Here comes Jordan Ayu, but uh, maybe we're going to see Uruguay mount an attack now. Spoke too soon. FM curse and all that. But no, we win it back. Good stuff. Ashimaru getting involved. Just come on as a sub. Jordan Ayu beats his man. Come on. Get that cross in. He does. And Andre Ayu, brother to brother. We get the goal. with 2-1 up. Right. Substitutions at this point. More about time wasting than anything else. We can do two more breaks in play. So Ekuban's coming on. And we're going to bring on Baba for Duncan. Duncan has been playing well, but I'm wary of the fact that he's on a yellow. I think Portugal are drawing with South Korea. We've got to hold on here. But let's see what we can do. Uruguay coming out as Uruguay, of course, now got to be chasing the game because if they don't score, they are out. So really tense finish coming up. But we've got the ball. Have they overcommitted themselves here, Uruguay? Jordan Ayu, Jordan Ayu, Jordan Ayu. Ooh, if he'd have scored there, it would have been all over. Right, we're bang on 90 minutes. So we're going to do our final substitution just to kill time. Salisu's looking tired. We're going to take him off for DQ. Four minutes of stoppage time. Can we hold on here? Ghana. Oh, is that going to be a late twist? Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. No, Baba's lost the ball. Oh, but luckily Uruguay, they kind of rushed it there, didn't they? We've just, we've just got to stay calm now. We've just got to stay calm. Stick to the script, boys. Don't do anything stupid. I would like to get it away from our goal, but no, we've given it away. Lamptey, though, wins it back. Lovely stuff from him. Worried we were going to see a second red card of this tournament now. I've permanently got my hands stuck together in a prayer position. Andre, are you? Ne <laughs> Nearly answers our prayers. But, oh, I thought, is that going to be full time? It, it, we're past the added four minutes. We've got the throw in. Come on, Lamptey, take your time. Take your time, ref. Blow the whistle as soon as this is back in play. That's what we need here. Come on. Come on, ref. Blow the whistle. Ghana are going to get their revenge on Uruguay and go through to the second round of the World Cup at Uruguay's expense. But it's still... They still haven't blown the whistle. Oh, there we go, finally. What a pointless final highlight. It was... 
Just two minutes of throw-ins, but all right, realistic, I suppose. And <laughs> there you go. Uruguay, you blew it. We didn't. And our reward for beating Uruguay? A match with Brazil. But you know what? That's enough excitement for one day. We're going to leave that for tomorrow's episode. Leave a comment down below. How far do you think we're going to go? And when it's ready, you can find out here.